Holly Yu. We're going to talk about a course that we uh, developed last academic year and we launched this semester, Storytelling for Life, Sharing Personal Narratives. I'm going to introduce uh, kind of the background and context of the course, and then Jane will talk about two of the pedagogical innovations that we've, um, that we've used. So um, this was something different from us because it's not an EFL course like most of the courses we teach in ELC, but rather a CAR subject, which is a general education um, subject. So all the PolyU students are required to take courses in these four different domains, for example, science, history, globalization, and then human nature relations and development, which is the area that our subject falls into. And our subject is about um, storytelling in the form of sharing personal narratives. Personal narratives we define as uh, talking about your own experiences, your beliefs, or your values. And the first part of the course, we focus pretty much on storytelling in general, kind of setting the context, storytelling in different cultures, what is a story and how do we build one leading up to their live storytelling assessment. And then after that, we explore storytelling in different contexts. So you can see social, academic, business, job interviews. This is where the semester ended this year, but we didn't, we were kind of a bit short. We didn't get to public speaking and digital uh, age social media stories. Uh, however, we were able to continue with the, with the uh, final two assessments, one being uh, video, video storytelling and then a reflection on the student's experience and growth through the semester. So uh, this is our first, first cohort this semester, and we anticipated maybe the typical PolyU student whose uh, level of English might be at a, you know, a certain level. However, the students seem to self-select um, confident students with, with very good levels of English were quite attracted to our course. Um, so we had a lot of higher level English um, students. And they came from a real variety of backgrounds. We had uh, students from, of course, Hong Kong and mainland China. We had uh, many students who had lived abroad for, for some time in North America. Students, three students from Kazakhstan, two from Sri Lanka, a Korean student. Students from, with mixed, mixed ethnicities, we're not exactly sure where they were from. but. Um, it was quite a diverse group. And they even brought in a, a diversity of experiences. We had one student who had just come from Tokyo, where she had spent a year in uh, training to be a pop star. And then another student who had spent the past five years training as an amateur athlete in Hong Kong, who decided she was going to go come to university. developing the course. So we started in the theory because this is a course about human development and um, you know going into the general education aspect of it. So we went back to Aristotle who had an early theory about the story having a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we looked at um, other interesting theories related to that, to the um, kind of humanities aspect. Jung's archetypes and the hero's journey became kind of rich, you know, uh, ideas that the students could use to develop their stories. And moving uh, into contemporary storytelling, we looked at you know classical storytelling structure. We talked to students about Cole's um, model of experiential learning, and explained to them this is what you'll be doing in this course, right? You'll be telling stories, and then you'll be getting feedback and reflecting on that thinking about what you'll be doing different next time to improve your storytelling, and you'll be doing it again. So lots of uh, doing and reflecting and doing again throughout the semester. Um, let me just check my notes here. So then we had uh, the overall course, which I um, was developed you know, with the idea of genre of pedagogy in mind. So we're always setting the context of stories learning about um, with different models and examples. So us telling our own stories, plenty of videos of stories that they can watch, ranging from 
uh, we had like a, a, a video of a local Hong Kong businesswoman telling the story of how she developed her business. You know, quite a, a moderate level of English, similar to maybe the English of our lowest level students. Uh, ranging to, you know, Steve Jobs and his classic storytelling, Jack Ma. We, we had storytelling examples from a wide variety of cultures and contexts. And our, our class time, we, we, you know, we really deconstructed what storytelling is and taught them how to do it. How to, how to uh, create an engaging hook to get the audience's attention, the different stages of the story, the climax, how they would finish a story, etc. So we, they did a lot of activities in regards to this. The other aspect we focused on was the storytelling, right? So the delivery, basically. How storytellers use their bodies, face, and voice to convey a story effectively with emotion. So the third kind of aspect to this course is the communicative uh, learning, um, communicative language teaching approach. Basically that the students are interacting in English and um, doing so in many times in real situations, telling real stories about themselves to people, other classmates who are eager to hear them. And um, uh, oh yeah, so I wanted to mention um, a couple of the other designs. So we had typically one hour lecture in, in the class and then two hour tutorial is how it worked each week. And in the tutorial or seminar, we always started off with a, um, a you know, discussion or tell a story to your partner. Um, and it was hard to get them to shut up. You know, they, they really enjoyed it, they loved it. Uh, so it was anything from, uh, you know, tell, tell your partner a story about a time you had a problem with a piece of technology. Uh, that one was, was quite a good one. And then also in each tutorial, we had what we called a storytelling challenge. So this was going into, you know, public speaking is a, is a difficult thing for everybody. So in each tutorial, you're gonna challenge yourself with an activity uh, as a storyteller. Um, sometimes we had them do a spontaneous story or they had minimal prep time. Uh, but one that sticks out is the last one we did with them, which was job interview role plays. So we, um, we learned about anecdotes, which are basically short stories with some details omitted that are told you know, to illustrate a particular point. So people might be using them in job interviews. We had them brainstorm different things about their own experiences related to you know, a time they overcame a challenge or working in a team, basically the kind of questions you would get in a job interview. And then we had the role play activity where half of the students were interviewers, Half of the students were the interviewees, and they went around and um, looks like a speed dating thing. Had many uh, interviews for for this uh, mysterious job, and we had the interviewers then come over and in a huddle decide who they were going to hire. Right, who was the most engaging uh, the interviewer, interviewee? And we had some chocolates as gifts for that. So that's a little bit about the context of the course and how we developed it. Um, Jane will talk now about the innovations. Okay, <clears throat> so um, our innovations on bit low tech, I don't know what you've got before, they were to do with assessments. Um, the first thing that came out of something from the, the Hub Conference last June, uh, I went to a session on assessment with my assessment team people. And one of the assigns almost that um, maybe Sophie talked about was, oh, well, no, we always negotiate this, the rubrics with the, with the students. And we kind of went, actually, Alan, who was like the, the guru of assessment, went, that's something I always wanted to do. I was like, <laughs> you kind of think of your typical EFL course with, like, if you know, it's for some of our, our biggest group, our biggest course, there's 150 groups you're not going to be negotiating rubrics with each group and, to, and still expect some kind of parity. Okay. So when we were talking about this course, I said to, to, to Chrissy, well, what do you think about this? It's like, it's just us. It's this group of 25. Maximum we had was 40. So should we give it a go? We've got no precedent. Let's give it a go. So we did. Um, one of the things 
pieces of advice we got at the beginning was don't talk about assessments in the first two weeks or everyone will leave. <laughs> okay, you have to have a really fun two weeks and then after I had to drop, they're stuck with you. <laughs> so, um, so we did, we brought it in week three, we said right now we're going to talk about the assessments. You're going to do these, videos. you're going to do these storytellers, you're going to stand up in front of people. What do you think we should be looking for? So we started off with, what do you think makes a good storyteller? Okay, and they kind of we brainstormed some ideas to the board, and that was the end of the lecture, I took a photo. And then in the seminars, we kind of went into a little bit more detail. Um, we put them up and said, great, you've got almost everything that we would want to look for, except we're English language teachers, and we want grammar, <laughs> and we want vocabulary, and we want pronunciation. So can we add those three in as well, please? <laughs> uh, they were kind of, yeah, all right. <laughs> but we won't make it very highly. Um, and then we tried, we got them to put them into, so how are you going to group these? You've seen your normal criteria. Normally, they've all done, um, they were either doing ELC courses or they've done them previously. So they know what a criteria kind of looked like. We said, you, you know the normal kind of things. How are we going to group what you want to see? And they came up with content. Uh, when we kind of suggested language, they came up with a language criteria. And um, then they had everything else under delivery, which got really, really long, because we're talking about gestures, we're talking about your facial expression, we're talking about making your voice, kind of, you know, using dialogue, being this person, and then going, oh, I said this. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, all those kind of things that kind of come into stories. And the criteria just got too long. And in the end, we agreed with them, we'd split it. We'd have delivery and use of voice. Okay, so they include pronunciation, but also everything else that you were going to do with the voice. And they quite like that because then the kind of language aspect or the pronunciation was kind of incorporated into a lot of other things that they thought they could do. Um, and then we asked them, so what would make, if you've got these, thing, uh, these four criteria, what would you want to see? What would be a really good one? In, and we could divide them up and say, you look at this one, you look at this one. And they pretty much came up with what we would come up with. So we went away, we kind of wrote it up in the format that the ELC criteria looked like, and that's what we went with. They had two um, storytelling assessments. We didn't ask them to do the writing, to, to do the criteria for the, the writing assessment, the reflection at the end. Um, and those are, the, those are the, the rubrics that we used. And, the nice thing about it is, uh, recently, the Poly U has been giving rubrics to students, which they didn't previously. Um, and so trying to find ways to incorporate this in the class, rather than just giving it to them and say, well, there's your rubrics, rate yourself. Getting them to do it, they, they did know what was expected of them. And at the end of the second um, story, we asked them to submit as well a reflection sheet. We just gave them the different criteria and said, tell us why we should give you a good mark in each criteria. What have you done in your video that shows us this? And they knew what was in the criteria, what they should be doing. The amount that they achieved it, some of them did really well, some of them less so, but they knew what they were aiming for. I use sensory language because I said this, 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 this. So they knew the criteria. Okay. The other one was something that, um, I've seen quite a lot in secondary schools. And I don't know, having come across it, certainly a poly years with CPBE when I was there, we couldn't really do it. And that's giving students the choice of how they want to be assessed, what, what assessment they want to do to show that they can do something. Um, again, because we had a smaller number, we thought, yeah, okay, we can try it. So, all we had was the second, the, the first story was live, that uh, presentation. The second one would be on a video. And we gave students the choice, either you can video yourself doing a live storytelling, and you'll be marked on delivery, as you would if you were doing it in front of someone, or you can do it as a digital story, and narrate a slideshow. You can bring in music, images, Video, same length, two different ways of telling your story, okay? And of course 
because we had workshops in the seminar of doing the digital stories, we gave them, we actually said, it's something we trialed in the right round table with some of you guys last year. And we then took it to our students and said, okay, you've got a little bit longer, go. And they had one hour to choose three images and tell a digital story on the journey. It was as broad as they liked. And then we should, then they, the next time they all came back and we watched them all. And some of them were, were just completely blown away. There was one about a fly that wanted to be like Flyman instead of Spider-Man. Because one of the Im we gave them images and they just had to choose three. There was the image of Spider of Spider-Man, and they said, I'm going to be Flyman. And it's all told from the, the, the viewpoint of this fly. Um, I'm going to go on to the next one. The problem with this is we then just pulled, we then have the issue with rubrics. How do we assess fairly two different forms of assessment? Okay, so we decided content, language, and use of voice probably could be the same. It was the delivery that was changing. So we called it audience engagement. And again, asked the students what they wanted us to look at. So for the, the live video, a video of a live storytelling, it was pretty much the same as we'd had before. We were looking at their presentation techniques, their soft skills, their interaction, their eye contact. The eye contact had to be with the camera. They couldn't then be moving around looking at an audience. They had to keep with the camera. That's where the audience was. So slightly different. Um, and for the digital story, they were being assessed on how they used the visuals, captions if they put them in, music, Okay, so for those of you who try to do digital stories with students, the number of times the music is so loud that you can't hear it, the narration is always an issue. Okay, so we kind of pointed this out to them, it was how they use it, how they put it together. Um, and at the point we came to an end, they were about to have consultations on what they've done so far. So we then had to start doing this remotely, we were being sent big clips of video, scripts, and trying to send feedback on, hey, you might do this differently. Um, again, you know, can't hear what you're saying, bring your music down. Um, we talked a little bit about Creative Commons licenses. In theory, they were supposed to be using um, images of music under Creative Commons. We didn't ask too closely. So those that kind of put their credits going up at the end, probably did. Those who didn't, probably didn't want us to know that they didn't. Um, and we had some incredible ones. There was one who'd done all the pictures to go with the story. He'd built Lego scenes of what was going on in his life that went along with it. It was great. He had a little Lego. He didn't animate it, but they had those the Lego stories. We had another one who'd called in a friend and basically acted it out. There are clips of video, but the video had been specifically filmed to go with the story. Other people use videos and pictures of things they've done previously to talk about something that they've done in their life previously. And some of them we said, we'll try it, see how you go. And part way through they said, no, I'm not doing this. I'm going to do the live video. And in the end, we had about half and half. There were two that caused us more trouble than we expected, because they did both. <laughs> um, one of them did it incredibly well. It was like a documentary, there was some live bits and then some video. This was the one who was the athlete, so we were showing her, showing, um, her in competition, she was a gymnast, and then it would talk to them, it would cut to her talking, so she was talking over um, the video and then some live. And it worked really, really well. But what do we assess her on? Is it unfair to then, she has two sets of criteria where everyone else is only having one? Okay, and we haven't quite kind of worked that one out yet. That's something we can, we we're gonna throw out to you. What do we do with that? The other one, it was her live, stood there, but then she had images flashing up and it didn't work quite so well. But her live storytelling was really good. If we just judged on the live storytelling, she'd have a really good grade. But the fact she put all these flashing images and things in, and it was a bit distracting. Should that bring her down? I don't know, we're throwing that out to you. Okay, what do we do with that? That's something we need to think of for future runs. Um, 
And then the reflective essays were quite good. It was quite interesting. Always have a reflective essay as your final assessment. Could you find out what they actually think about it? Okay. So this is what we, we expected. We gave, we scaffolded the uh, we got the, uh, the the essay. We gave them a range of questions and asked them to choose three. And most of them answered three out of these four. One was, "What makes a good storyteller?" and "Are you one?" One was. Um, to do with confidence in English, growing, and um, one, one, yeah, how, how have you developed over the semester? Okay, and the one we expected that people would say yes was yes, I'm more confident because they were having to talk English, particularly in this group where there are a lot of non uh, non Cantonese speakers, they were having to talk English all the time, and so yeah, predictably, a lot of people said yep, yeah, I'm more confident. Not necessarily that my English is better, a lot of them are very good anyway, but I'm more confident. But then we had all sorts of other things that we had before that kind of blew us away. Like just the way that they kind of then see stories in society. We were like, oh! I know this one. I've never known about the people that I see in class with, but now I know about somebody who did this and somebody who did this, and I may not ever remember their names, but I know the stories. And that's pretty much it.